What's going on, everybody? Xavier Porter, Shoot the Fire, Brooklyn Fights in the building. Um, as you know, we got some fights coming up. You know what I mean? it has been a lot of talk with this Mikey Garcia, Errol Spence fight. Uh, I'm predicting um, that Mikey Garcia will pull out a decision, um, either a split decision or a unanimous decision. <clears throat> I know everybody's been in my, you know, everybody been in my inbox and my DMs, texting me, calling me, calling me crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? They like your ex, you bugging with this. You know what I mean? You bugging. But hey, man, I go against the grain all day, every day, and like I said, and like you know, like I broke down the fight before. All Mikey got to do is keep keep the fight in the inside of the ring. I mean, yeah, keep the inside in the middle of the ring. It's, now, it's easier said than done. You know what I'm saying? Because Errol Spence is so tall compared to Mikey. So big, so strong compared to Mikey. My thing is, will Errol, will Errol Spence be able to... His, and Errol Spence got a phenomenal jab. Let's keep it a buck. His jab is a power jab. There's, there's guys who, who have a jab, they got the snap jab, they pop. They, you know, they hit you with that jab just to keep you at bay. Errol Spence got a jab that pushes you back. Errol Spence's jab is like a it's like a lead right hand in a sense. Even though he's fighting from the South Pole angle, it's like a lead right hand. It's a strong, powerful jab. And what and, and once he gets the jab moving and he and he got the timing and the distance down, that's when he's able to kind of get closer and closer push you, push you back, because the jab is supposed to keep you at bay, the jab is supposed to keep you at bay, to, to keep you at bay to set up the next punch, which usually is the left hand, a lot of fighters, whether they're southpaw or orthodox, they use their jab to set up their next power punch, which from an orthodox stance, you use your jab, your left jab, and you come with the right hand, boom, and then, you, and then you're supposed to hit them with the one, two, three, with the, with the left hook behind it, some people, from the southpaw, well, in the, from the southpaw stance, you throw your right jab to come with the left hand behind it. A lot of different, a lot of times, you find a fighter who can actually turn the jab over with the hook as well. Like, like um, Vladimir Kuzco was famous for throwing his jab and then throwing a left hook right after it, which he learned from Emmanuel Stewart. It's like a, it's like a choppy, check left hook in a sense. Floyd does it also. Like it, it, Floyd a pop a jab, pop a jab, and he catch with the with the with the with the check left hook. So you know, if Mikey Garcia, well, if Errol Spence, I should say, could just throw his right jab and then come behind him with the right hook, that is going to do a lot of damage and it's going to surprise Mikey Garcia because I'm I'm banking on the fact that Mikey is gonna, you know, he's gonna circle, but he's gonna keep the fight. In the, he's gonna do his best to keep the fight in the middle of the ring and try to stay away from Errol Spence left hand the thing is you gotta you gotta figure out a way to stay away against Errol Spence right hand because once he lands in that jab like I'm saying that jab is pushing him back pushing him back pushing him back now again m most people including Mikey will probably think once he lands a jab he's gonna come with the left straight down the pipe or he's gonna try to throw the left to the body I think Errol Spence is gonna do something different in this fight where He's going to pop his jab, and then he's going to turn the jab into a right hook behind it. Pop the jab, pop the jab, right hook upstairs, or right hook to the body. Either way, either or, whatever he does, it's going to be extremely, extremely difficult for Mikey to get out the range of that. So Mikey's defense is going to be another key factor in keeping the fight in the middle of the ring. As long as Mikey can do that, he could probably outbox Errol Spence. If he doesn't, if he's not successful in doing that, then all we're gonna see is Errol Spence walk him down, pound him out like he's been doing everybody else. And I, and hats off to Errol Spence, man. He's a phenomenal boxer. You know, I just got a difference of opinion right now in this fight. But like I said, hats off to Errol Spence. He is a phenomenal boxer. I mean, everybody he faces, he puts severe punishment on. And if he don't knock you out, he's still pounding you out. You still feeling the effects of Errol Spence punches. He's a big, strong welterweight. He is the prototypical welterweight version of marvelous Marvin Hagler. And I say that because he's he's pretty much an ambidextrous fighter where he can land power shots with either hand and take you out with either hand. His body work is, is phenomenal. It's, it's amazing. There's not a lot of fighters who commit to the body. And that's what I love about Errol Spence. He goes to the body. And he doesn't just go to the body in the later rounds. He starts from the beginning with that. Fighters these days don't go to the body. When you when you watch certain fighters in, in certain matches, the, it, 
the first round will tell you exactly what type of fighter you got. You know what I mean? Every time, every fight I watch Errol Spence, he goes to the body immediately. No one does that these days in boxing. That's what makes him such a special and great fighter. Because once he, because the body takes away the whole, it takes away the fight from the fighter regardless. It cuts the fighter down, and you can't, and the fighter can't go anywhere. You take away the body, then the head is right there, and then the head will fold. It's like chopping down a tree. It's like breaking down a house. If you take down the foundation, nothing will stand on top. With Errol Spence, he has this figured out. Him and Derrick James, his trainer, his coach of the year from 2017, I believe. 2018, I'm not sure which year, but I know it's one of those. He's also one of the Charlo Twins brothers, I mean, um, trainers. He has his down pack. You go to the body, the fighter can't move, he can't go anywhere. He's stuck, he's like, he's not only feeling the pain of the body, but then he's standing in the middle for everything else. If Mikey finds a way to kind of like keep the fight in the middle of the ring, offset some of the body shots, offset that right hook and the left, and just kind of, you know, just keep moving, stay in his pedal, he got a good chance of winning. If Mikey start getting hit clean, and Errol Spence start really digging him, and Errol Spence start turning that, that lead right right jab to a, a lead right hook or a choppy right hook or, or, or a check right hook from the southpaw stance, Mikey's going to have a lot of problems. And if and if Errol gets to digging him to the body, you can say the fight is over. You can, you can just say, you know what, let me turn off the TV, come back later on, 12 hours later, after he take a nap and wake up and see the results. Because Errol Spence, once Errol Spence gets rhythm, once a fighter gets rhythm, he goes into what I call the matrix zone. He gets into the matrix where he sees everything in front of him, he sees everything that's coming at him, and he's able to adapt. He's able to see it before it happened. Like Neo in the Matrix. There was nothing Agent Smith can do. If if Errol Spence gets into the into the matrix zone or Mikey Garcia, it's gonna be a quick a quick ending and it's not, and it's gonna be brutal. It's gonna be brutal. The fight can go two ways. It could go Mikey Garcia by decision or Errol Spence by knockout from a body shot. Again, the fight can go two ways. It could go Mikey Garcia by decision or Errol Spence by knockout with a body shot. I don't think Errol Spence is going to take him out to the head, but if he does take Mikey Garcia out, it will be to the body. Let me know your thoughts. Shoot the five Brooklyn fights Xavier Porter in the building. Drop your comments below. Appreciate all the comments. I love the I love the support. I appreciate all my subscribers. I'm growing and building a page for y'all. You know what I mean? Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if there's anything in your mind you want to chop it up and discuss. Any other fights you want to break down. As I continue to grow the page, as the page keeps getting growing, we're gonna start going live. We're gonna build up this community, and we're gonna start calling out certain people, man. We're going to start inviting people in, and we're going to start calling out certain people. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of funny stuff that go on, you know, or during media week and all that, where certain people come out and be trying to cover fights and everything. I be seeing a lot of funny guys out here, man, a lot of funny dudes out here, man. I keep it a buck all day, every day. I walk these streets dolo. Anybody got an issue, come see me. It is what it is. All right? Shoot the fire. Brooklyn Fights, Xavier Porter. I'm out.